Hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is story about what if Naruto was in the Anbu. Part 5. If you guys enjoy this what if. And want to see part 6. Comment down below. And let me know, before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Naruto and Angel padded along the forest floor surrounding the Kurama hideout, Moon a ghostly orb above. Every trap was set and unactivated, and his clones reported no disturbances. So why was all his hair up straight? Angel was tense as well below him. Nicking his thumb with a kunai he runs through some hand seals. Summoning Jutsu he whispers. Akira appears serious when she takes in her summoner's posture. Do you sense that? Naruto signed. He taught Akira and his Oka how to read his signs well, sort of. They were still learning but picked it up faster than him. Akira closed her eyes in concentration and nodded. Weird I know. That aura. An id. It's active under the full moon. Kurama muttered, his first contact in days. An id? Naruto asked. Figure it out but hint, it's not a danger to you. Yet. Just go back to your pointless guarding. Naruto scowled but relaxed. Even if Kurama was being an ass he wouldn't lead Naruto into trouble. Turning to an intense looking Akira the blonde shook his head. False alarm, sorry. You can go back, I'll summon you for sushi after my rotation in two days he promised. Akira grinned as she shakily translated it and headed back home. He looks at Angel. We're done here, the shadow clones will wake us if needed. The tired duo head inside to their temporary lodgings in the room above Yakumo's, a hatch poised to open for quick entrance through the floor. Naruto lay on his futon, still in complete uniform, pondering his charge. Yakumo Kurama, just turned 13 15 days ago, parents died in a house fire and her Jinjutsu sealed away. Her eyes are so empty why? It bugged him to see someone his age be so depressed and yet so angry with everything. Ukuku Naruto bolts upright with a kunai in hand. A malevolent chakra pulses below him and in an instant he's in Yakumo's room with the medics. Please, stop. Mother, father. Don't hate me she whimpers, though it becomes clear she's asleep. Dante administers another drug before turning to Naruto. Sorry, mouse, sometimes Yakumo-chan's chakra seal activates, especially on a full moon. Nothing to worry about. Naruto tilts his head. Is it an id, Dante? The medics stiffen and turn cold. It would be best if you drop it. There should be no more disturbances, go back to sleep Naruto wants to argue, but technically Dante was in charge, so he shunshins back through the open hatch. Hey, what was that? It was scary, scarier than when you use Kurama's chakra angel whispered while ducked under a table. He'd ordered her to stay back before he'd left. Something dark, something no one wants to talk about, it seems. It's probably the reason Yakumo is up here. Anyways, let's get to sleep, tomorrow I have to compress the chakra in my fingers. For the last five days Naruto would leave clones along with his captains, hinged wood clones, before going into the woods nearby and setting up a chakra barrier for three hours, practicing narrowing down where Kurama's chakra filtered through. So far he was succeeding, but the strain left burns, if maintained longer than a few minutes Naruto suspected Kurama wasn't as free with his chakra as before but didn't dare ask. Next day. Naruto watched as Yakumo sat on a swing outside in her bathroom, apathetic loathing set in stone on her pasty face. He technically was supposed to be an unseen shadow, but Yakumo reminded him of himself, when he was younger she just didn't hide it like he did. Why are you so angry, he asked from a branch. The girl scowled up at him. Why not? I've been locked away, and my parents died what's there to be happy about? Well. You're alive, aren't you? He questioned with a shrug. Really, he didn't like those who refused to move on at least she had parents at one point. HMPH, and for how long? How long before I'm ordered to be put to sleep? To stop existing. No, there is nothing to be happy for. Just be invisible like the other Ambus that come here, unseeing and uncaring. She turned her head. Naruto didn't know what to do, so he further broke protocol. His captain would have an aneurysm if he ever found out. Are you allowed visitors? Yes, but no one comes they treat me like a plague. Then. I'll come visit. He said after a moment. Yakumo eyed the blonde in suspicion. Why would you do that? What could you get out of it? Naruto shrugged. I don't know, a friend perhaps. Or nothing at all. Either way, may I come visit you sometimes? He landed on his feet and lazily walked back next to his charge. As she stepped into her room the pale girl paused. You can come. But don't think it means we're friends. She huffed before slamming the door. Naruto stood frozen with a smile. Of course not. Why? Why what? You promised to see the girl. Why would you, a cold-blooded killer, do that? I am not cold-blooded and it's because I can help keep her from being completely alone. Kurama roared. Why do you care, Naruto Uzumaki? 
your heart has darkness, so what does another creature's feeling mean to you? Or do you deny your own black heart? Karama wasn't expecting an answer. Stupid fox, of course my heart has darkness everyone's does, especially those in the shinobi life. You admit it therefore you're tainted you cannot help the girl. That's where you're wrong. It's human fate to have darkness. Then stop pretending to be good. But, it's human nature to fight against the darkness and come out on top. That's what it means to be human, to still be decent despite your past and pains. Karama was stunned at what he heard, but slammed against his cage. You don't understand, he was pure, why can't you be? Just. Leave. And the fox cut off the connection, leaving Naruto to his thoughts as he went on patrol. Next day, Ferret arrives back. You promise. Yakumo stated and held out a pinky. Naruto nods and offers his up as they hook them in a promise. I promise it won't be for a while or that often with the Chunin exams coming up, but I'll make it out here occasionally. Like I care she declares in a 180 and stalks inside. Ferret arrives as the door closes and turns towards his younger comrade with bandaged arms and neck. Thank you, mouse. I'll take it from here. Dragon Sama wants you in his office tomorrow at 5 am. Great, no breaks for me. Naruto hung his head and set off through the trees to catch dinner and some relaxation. Meanwhile, a wagaker. Adara cackled as he flew away from his battle with Anoki, his new hands already an extension of himself. That will show him to deny me stupid Anoki, trying to make me a future cage, and then saying I couldn't get that kenjutsu until I took the hat on. HMPH, to be a cage is a desk job, not enough art. Though, where should I go next? Dadara voiced his thoughts aloud as his bird soared. Hmm, I know. Higher country could use some explosions to match its name, Un. The new missing ninja altered his course with a grin. Anoki looked on in annoyance as his ex-apprentice flew away with a kenjutsu he was using as a bartering chip to retire. Around him buildings burned and so far twenty were injured from their battle, though none died. Still, Dadara defected, and with his rank in crime, he'd be branded an S-rank criminal. Dadara, you were always too crazy for your own good. I shiver at the thought of you joining our enemies. Dragon's office, next day, crack of dawn. You summoned me, Dragon-sama. Naruto stood at attention as his commander sat back with a random piece of paperwork. The man looked up after a moment and threw Naruto's scroll. Your squad members Wolf and Cat just returned from apprehending Suna's shipment of weapons and have increased our supply, blaming missing ninja. However, Kanoha's armory plant is where? He looked up expectedly. Near the graveyard, sir. The most dead piece of land in our country besides the Kaiubi ceiling site. It's southwest, towards. Bird country. It's a target of Suna, isn't it? Most likely, yes. Jiraiya taught you shock tags and other simple security seals this past week. You will be traveling to the plant today to set up various traps and seals to prevent any theft. Meanwhile, your captain is already there rerouting the paths leading towards the plant. You have three days there along with two days of travel time. Jiraiya will arrive on the last day to check over your work so don't mess up. The seals and instructions in that scroll will create a barrier seal that you can link to the head Joan in there. Yes, Dragon Sama Naruto turned to leave and picked up Angel from the locker room on his way out. Oh, and Mouse. One of those prisoner scrolls saved an Anbu on the Suna mission. Good work Dragon said in a monotone, but Naruto could tell it held a smidgen of pride. No problem anything for my comrades. Your Shunshin and Water Jutsu still suck, though he added on. I love you too, Commander. Naruto said dryly and left before Dragon could ruin the moment even more. The graveyard, 23 hours later. Combining endless shunshin and chakra channeling, Naruto and Angel arrived at the plant by 4 am. Activating his Anbu tattoo and giving the hand signal the blonde and cat are led into the main building, smoke billowing out of the towers in the background. The graveyard, battleground of the Seven Tails Yinchuriki and Hirazan Saratobi in the Second War was nothing but rock land for half a mile radius and resembled earth rather than fire due to Saratobi's infamous reshaping of his battlefields. The Chinchuriki had died in the battle, and the resulting pulse of demonic chakra prevented any greenery from growing for years, and the plant's presence kept it that way in the present. Surrounding the area was a dense forest with a single well-kept path that enemy shinobi not used to Kanoha terrain would use to judge the way to the armory. To counteract this, Tenzo was busy playing god with the earth and rerouting it to a fake plant really an Anbu outpost more than equipped to deal with Suna sabotage efforts. Inside waited three other Anbu in standard black robes who Naruto hadn't met before and the head Jonin, Takara Nahara, a man with bored brown eyes and an unassuming face even his hair was a muted brown that stuck flat. Anbu agent, codename Mouse, here to set up defensive measures Naruto greeted neutrally and bows slightly. Takara bows back and clears his throat. Mouse, yes we weren't expecting you for another three hours at least. No matter, you have four hours of rest. After that you will be under Falcon here. 
An Anbu that vaguely looked like a bird inclined her head and hellos Anbu weren't too enthusiastic in greetings. Well, unless you were Hikaru. Or Naruto on a sugar rush. That too. Where you'll be given access to the armory to strengthen our security. Naruto bowed even as Takeru turned abruptly and headed away. Naruto's fellow Black Ops members stand impassively, staring him down. Naruto stared back. These were some of the Anbu sent on long-term assignments, much like Farad. Contrary to what most civilians and foreign ninja believed, Kanoha's Anbu operated throughout the continent undercover, maintaining order and running the spy network. It was common for Anbu to be given assignments like this one low combat, high importance but quiet for six months or more to wind down after being in the force for longer than normal away, to still be useful and stay sharp but prevent breakdowns from pressure. Like Itachi Ichiha. Naruto shivered when he recalled the story Yugao had told him about the prodigy that tarnished Squad Row's name. Welcome, you know I am Falcon, these two are walrus and penguin sleeping quarters are down the hall. Falcon signed. Naruto inclined his head, curious as to why they didn't talk as this was basically the equivalent of off-duty but followed suit. I look forward to working with you. Naruto signed back and headed there. Angel, who kept quiet, glanced back at our new co-workers with puffed-out cheeks. I don't like them, Angel declared as they lay down on the stiff bunk. Naruto chuckled. And why not? They haven't done anything. Exactly. I like Ro better even Hikaru is preferable to these cardboard guys Naruto quirked an eyebrow. Cardboard guys. Yeah you know, because they have no personality. When will we be back with our own squad? I don't know Angel soon though, I hope. He didn't say it, but he too missed being with his friends on missions. Just then his captain stumbled in and face planted on his respective bunk with a groan. Hey captain. Naruto turned his face slightly. Tenzo just waved a limp hand. Would captain. You're here. Angel soared over the distance and landed on the man's back, eliciting a hiss. Go. Away. Please. Angel just purred and stretched out for a nap. Next day. Why did you summon me here? Akira demanded from atop Izoka when she found herself not called to a poker game, Naruto's apartment, or place of dining, but in a rock wasteland with a factory. There weren't any enemies around to beat up either. You wanted to be summoned well I need your two's help. Take these seals to the top of the smoke towers and place them there they apparently dissipate the smoke more to make it less visible. Akira scowled once she translated. It was bad enough her summoner insisted on signing as much as possible, even when not needed, but to ask her to dirty herself for a chore. Hell no, get a shadow clone or better, yet you do it. Naruto winced, as he really didn't want to do it and his clones could fail, by running out of chakra while climbing, and he really didn't want to explain to Jiraiya why his dissipation seals fluttered away in the wind. An idea struck after a few moments of panic. And I guess Pakin was right panthers really don't like high places. I understand, I'll make it his hand is stopped by Akira tackling him down and grabbing the bag with the stack of tags in her jaws and slings it over her body. She hops back onto his oka and glares at Naruto. I'll show that I must not underestimate myself. Let's go to his oka. They speed off while Naruto and Angel sniggers. That was priceless. The cat managed between laughs. Naruto agreed. Let's get to work Falcon is waiting to walk us through the perimeter for trap setting. Does this mean we have to come back a lot to fix them? Angel grumbled in distaste. Naruto shook his head. No, they'll have these Anbu to keep them in working order after I teach them how and others will come to change them. Now be silent, I have a feeling talking is out with Falcon. Final day. Turns out Naruto was right. Falcon was the silent type, not even Walrus and Penguin had heard Falcon's voice and the three had been on this mission for seven months. Even a sign was out and less a pointed question was asked. As Naruto double-checked the barrier setup and other measures of defense before Jiraiya showed up, he rolled his eyes at the thought of how bland Falcon was. God help him if they were ever put into a squad together or ran another mission. Ah, Mouse, I would like to thank you. Takeru smiled at him. The man was bland but kind, and Naruto already liked him he reminded him of Tenzo, who had headed out yesterday. Thank you, it was no trouble. I also made these up for you. Naruto passed off a scroll containing different seals for the plant. The blonde had made them up when he saw how sparse the place was in the tag department. The Karu curiously channeled chakra into the matrix, and over a hundred sealed tags ranging from larger explosives to privacy seals, and even a duo of prisoner scrolls for an injured comrade, just in case popped out. Naruto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. Most of those I had made already and I just added to it. This costs a small fortune. Nah, the supplies are a fraction of the cost, and I get a 30% discount on everything related to the creation of Fuinjutsu anyways. Plus, my commander would want our armory to be well protected, and those might either save your lives, or at least, make them easier out here. Emotion towards the privacy seals, so I hope you enjoy them. 
Dragon Samba will reimburse me anyways. Takeru seals them back up and bows. Thank you anyway, Mouse. After a few moments Takeru heads back inside, leaving Naruto and Angel alone to do their checks. Oh ho, good work Gaki Jiraiya chirps from behind. It takes all of Naruto's self-control to not jump or scream but instead turn towards his tutor. Angel didn't have that self-control. Hiss. Don't do that she orders and amuse Jiraiya. The Sanin just chuckled. Is the kitty cat afraid? Jiraiya teased. Angel continued to glower while Naruto's face palmed. Jiraiya-sama, please tell me you've been verifying my work so we can go home. It was poker night tomorrow and he wanted to get back in time to take the metaphorical candy from the invited Chunins, an arrogant clan head scheduled to show up. Yeah, yeah, Gaki, I checked it all out and we're good to go. Art is an explosion. Adara was just going to keep flying over the building in the middle of nowhere as there wasn't many around to appreciate his art and he really wasn't a mad bomber as most of Iowa always claimed him to be but then he spotted the infamous Jiraiya the Toad Sage. The thrill of such a fight had the ex-explosion core captain drooling. Grinning at the fact that he could battle and then escape after he had his fun, Dadara shouted down at the man who would learn to appreciate his art. And the random Anbu joining him. Art is an explosion. Dadara gave a cheeky grin as Jiraiya spotted him. As an introduction he released some clay spiders. Landing on the ground nearby, he shouted Katsu. And small explosions littered the ground. He didn't aim for the building he recognized as the armory because while Dadara was cocky, he wasn't stupid. Kanoha might appear weak and forgiving to the civilian side, but Iwa knew. Kanoha was a sleeping giant. If the plant got damaged in his fun, Dadara would find himself being chased relentlessly by the strongest of the five. So, he'd just lead them away and then make everything go cabbly. Turning his bird slightly he flew off, smirking when the pair followed him, dodging his creations along the way. But Naruto and Jiraiya. He's mocking us Jiraiya growled in annoyance while batting away one spider before it set off. Naruto rolled his eyes behind his mask at the stupidity of Jiraiya's decision in the situation, following a potentially deadly enemy while letting the other Anbu stay behind as me and the Gaki can handle it ludicrous. I, Dadara, will show you chumps the true meaning of art, on. Was the distant call once they were a distance away from the plant. Their formerly mystery assailant began lazily circling them moments later and the bombs were starting to become more deadly. Covering Jiraiya's behind while the man failed at making his few long-range jutsu hits, a crazy idea hit. Jiraiya-sama, vault me up, Angel, let's try our wind combination to Naruto spoke and motioned for Angel to hang on. Wait, what? Jiraiya sputtered as he himself was about to summon Gamabunta, but it was too late, Naruto channeled a burst of chakra to his legs and ran up to the Sanin, planting his feet on the back before leaping high in the air. Once the Anbu reached a respectable height he went through multiple seals. Wind style. Great breakthrough and a wild blast of wind was released towards the soaring clay bird. Angel, from atop Naruto's head, filled her lungs and blew. A steady but weak stream of fire barreled into the chakra-enhanced wind gust, the flames spreading and managing to hit the bird on the tip. As the bird faltered, Dadara toppled off and his creation turned towards the human cat pair. Normally, Hellcat fire techniques were ineffective until adulthood and angels were worse than most. Fire took a chunk of chakra and cats never had as much as humans. However, when a Hellcat partners with a wind user especially one who could create torrents of wind with a high d rank jutsu that weakness is nullified. Ha! Take that pony-tailed man-angel crooned as their opponent fell towards the earth. Problem was, so were they. Shit Naruto cursed. The only option to remain unhurt would be to focus a great breakthrough at the ground then create shadow clones to catch their slightly slowed descent. Of course, Dadara's bird had other plans than to allow that. It dive-bombed them and Naruto's eyes widened when it started glowing. Katsu. Dadara screamed and Naruto twisted his body while snatching Angel to his chest. He might die, but Angel could survive the blast. Summoning several shadow clones they piled on him to slightly cushion the attack. Waiting for the pain. That never came. But the. Naruto muttered as his body was yanked away by a slimy tongue. And have my apprentice die too early. I, Jiraiya the Valiant, will take it from here. This crazed small fry is of no importance. Jiraiya thumped his chest from atop an oversized purple toad. Both cat and boy sweat dropped, and Dadara followed soon, landing on a clay animal several feet away. Boy don't diss my art. The bomber said indigently. Try this, un. My C2 dragon. As Dadara lands on a pile of clay animals, he puts a wad of clay between both hands. Soon, a massive dragon forms and roars, Dadara hopping on and aiming its snout towards Jiraiya and Naruto. The dragon opens its mouth and smaller versions burst forth in pursuit of the two. Other, smaller dragons emerge from the tail. Aki, you and Miss Kitty distract those creatures while I take out the user. Jiraiya ordered seriously for the first time since Dadara mocked them into following. 
Naruto nodded and made several clones that took off around the field. Oh, girly man, I find your art so. Childish. Naruto called and taunted cheekily. Dadara roared. You little brat go, my children, turn the unbeliever into art, un. Angel, hold on. Naruto said as the dragons focused on them. Drawing his shukoto he cut several smaller bombs in half and rebounded off backwards in a single-handed handspring before they explode. Landing several meters he continues dodging. Four medium-sized dragons congregate on the pair. At the same time the ground erupts from a hidden explosive. Yes. Taste my beautiful art because all art is an explosion. Katsu. The four go off as one, and only a Kawarimi with a shadow clone stops Naruto and Angel from becoming Barbeck. Hey, you okay? Angel asked after her ears stopped ringing. Naruto grunted and held his side. I should be fine, it's just a few ribs, but I hope Jiraiya does whatever he has planned soon. He muttered. Jiraiya and his toad had disappeared sometime during Naruto's distraction. Creating several shadow clones all of the Naruto run through the hand seals wind style, great breakthrough create a barrier from other clay bombs. Hundreds of booms surround the makeshift wind barrier. Angel covers her ears and Naruto shifts, ready for more. Adara chuckles next to his now tiny leftover dragon. You survived, eh? Then it's time to a barrier to rise up to stop the chakra flow, and the crazy man collapses in a heap, Jiraiya posing triumphantly from behind. Never fear, my young apprentice. The great Jiraiya the gallant just saved the day. No one can stand against this handsome devil. Naruto rolled his eyes from behind his mask and limped over. You could have ended that before it even started Jiraiya-sama the blonde groused. Now I have to replace my armor, and Angel's ears are damaged that bills aren't cheap you bastard. You're paying for it, he demanded and pointed an accusatory finger at Jiraiya who was attaching several seals to Dadara's back. Shut it, Gaki. Sure I could have knocked him out as soon as he landed, but making seals capable of shutting down the explosion release takes time. It's not my fault you can't dodge worth a damn Jiraiya said flippantly. Naruto prepared a comeback when the other Anbu landed around them. We have secured the base. Falcon signed. Orders, Jiraiya-sama. Keep on alert. Me and the Gaki have this bigger Gaki under control. My spy network just got word of his defection, he'll be taken in for interrogation. Falcon nodded at Jiraiya's words. Save journeys back Falcon replied, and the three disappeared once again. Naruto sighed as their chakra signatures left. Couldn't even say bye to me. Jerks. Shut it, human. Your whining annoys me. Sorry Kurama hey. You're sounding better. Naruto thought happily. His sort of almost friend spoke to him without prompting in an almost civil tone. DSK. That fight was pathetic. Naruto sweat dropped. Maybe we're not improving after all. Toss me a prisoner scroll Jiraiya's voice interrupted his musings. In a fluid motion Naruto threw the sage the roll and Dadara's body vanished inside. Surprised, Naruto caught it back. I'm sending you back before me in case this was a premeditated attack. I'll add a few more barrier seals and clean up the evidence before meeting you in Kanoha. Are you okay to travel? Jiraiya looked mildly concerned at the side. Yes, I'll be fine. Naruto assured before holding out his hand. What? Pay up. If you were quicker then Angel wouldn't have been hurt. With a growl Jiraiya tossed a purse of Ryo. That should cover the cost. You know, you're too protective of that cat how do you expect her to be a partner if she can't fight? I thought Hellcats were supposed to be masters in combat. Naruto bristled as he unsealed some bandages and wrapped Angel's ears. She isn't ready for this level of combat. One day she'll be stronger than any other of her kind. But until then I'll protect her. Now, good day and don't goof off on your way home he spoke curtly, before using several consecutive sunshine away. Hanoha, later. Naruto landed in front of the gates the next evening, ribs still fusing together. Damn, why can't they heal faster? He mentally grumbled. Kotetsu noticed the Anbu entry, but didn't try to make light conversation when he noticed Naruto carrying Angel. What happened? Kotetsu asked, spotting the blood stains seeping through the bandages and Naruto's slightly burned and ripped armor. Explosion its burst eardrum and a damaged one, she'll be fine after a visit to Hana. Naruto clipped while signing in. Honestly he would have sedated his partner and put her into a scroll, but the cat glowered at him when he suggested it through sign. She was quite adamant to stay awake and alert, and Naruto didn't want to incite her ire later for such a minor injury. Oh, well good. Say, will you be at the next poker game in a couple of days? Gate duty is dull enough, and watching you wipe the floor with newbies is always a joy. Err. Maybe Naruto said after a moment. Though Kotetsu and Izumo were eternal chunin they were actually jonin level and strength of village couldn't trust weaklings to guard the gates. However, putting on a militaristic view didn't attract tourists and warn potential enemies. So, having too laid back, whining, but deceptively weak Chunin at the desk, protected the village and kept Kanoha's image of peace intact. 
Most Jonin recognized this and put up with the pair for the various bar nights, poker games, and occasional party. Izumo tried to add his two cents in, but Naruto had already taken off towards T and I before the first word was spoken. Five minutes and a surge of his chakra for identification later Naruto was admitted to Konoha's interrogation and intelligence building. Figuring Ibiki would be the better choice to keep Dadara alive during interrogation, he knocked on the infamous man's door. Hum in a gruff voice commanded. Peeping in he saw, the dragon was there as well, and Naruto stepped in quietly and stood at attention. Oh, mouse. What are you doing here? Ibiki questioned. Naruto took out the scroll. Gurea Sama and I captured a recently missing ninja, Dadara of Iwa, after he arrived at the armory plant. Dadara has the explosion release and kinjutsu that augments it. Jiraiya Sama sealed away both his chakra and the kinjutsu after a brief battle. Dragon hummed. Tell me everything Dragon ordered this can count as your oral report. Two hours later. Hana had healed Angel's ears rather easily, though not before lecturing the pair on letting their guard down when in confrontations. Now the pair trudged up the stairs towards bed well, really Naruto trudged. Angel just snoozed on his head when Kakashi opened his door. Ma, Naruto, back from your mission. He asked with a nice smile. Naruto glowered. No, I was just out for an evening stroll he deadpanned while pointing to his uniform. Oh? Then you won't mind training my genin tomorrow, right? Great, thanks, all the jonin sensei are holding a joint training tournament tomorrow at noon in training ground 3 and you can run the traps course. Hell no Naruto said immediately. I'm off duty tomorrow, train your own brats, senpai. Ma, ma, you are supposed to be helping to train them. I'll be away tomorrow, so thanks for the favor, Jana. And he puffed away, no doubt to re-enter his apartment from the window. Sigh, why me? Will I ever get a day off? Naruto pulled at his hair. Entering his apartment he sets Angel down on the couch and plops down on the floor to undo his armor. A deep breathing from his room has a kunai already charged with chakra in his grasp. Creeping towards the door Naruto slides it open, aiming the darkened room for intruders. What he found, though. Akeru. Get the hell out of my apartment. I repeat, what are you doing in my apartment, sleeping in my bed? Naruto tried again when it became obvious Akeru was still half asleep. The older teen clearly sat up. Oh, Chibi Kohai, I wasn't expecting you back until tomorrow. He greeted me. Naruto's hand rested on a seal placed on the wall. Just a burst of his specific Kaiubi chakra and hundreds of kunai would launch from a series of traps and converge on the futon and skewer Hikaru alive. Senpai, you have three seconds to start explaining why you're here and not in your own apartment or I will try out my new home security trap seals on you. Naruto threatened. Hikaru gulped. Eh, no need to get hasty. See, my apartment is infested with rats so I had to move out for the next week. We're roommates now. Hell no. Why aren't you at HQ, the dorms are there for a reason. Naruto rubbed the bridge of his nose. Dragon team kicked me out for having no regards for tidinesses, whatever that means and the captain and Yugao said you wouldn't mind. Not just how can a Hyuga be so? un -Hyuga like Naruto questioned when the shock caught up to him. Your apartment is so messy that rats have invaded, the dorms aren't capable of housing you, and everybody is pawning you off to me. The youngest Naruto pointed an accusatory finger at his friend, who upon closer inspection, had several articles of clothing, books, and weapons lying around. Well I refuse to let you be this way, Hikaru. Well you are here you will be neat and tidy. But cleaning is boring, you're just like Hiyashi-sama, you don't understand that my apartment is like a canvas of art, and art is messy. Naruto shuddered in remembrance of his last mission. I won't tell you how to keep yours. Canvas, but this is my canvas, and I happen to like seeing the floor with the use of the Byakugan. Clean this up while I'm in the shower, or I'm telling Guy you want to room with him. Instantly Hikaru was cleaning the whole apartment while a shadow clone of him dusted. A thought came to his mind. Hey Hikaru. I'll sleep on the couch tonight, as a reward for you actually cleaning. Next morning. Naruto stretched lazily at 9 in the morning and slowly took off the earplugs back quote FROM both his and Angel's ears. The cat mirrored his stretches. Naruto. She purred at him as she received a back scratch. Did we actually get to sleep in? Yep. Hikaru just begged to be Guy's training partner today, so who were we to refuse? Naruto chirped. Angel blinked. Huh? Naruto chuckled. Don't worry about it, let's go on a run before breakfast. We don't have to be at the training grounds until noon. He bit a thumb through his mask and did the summoning jutsu. Akira and Hizoka appear with dual yawns. What's the big idea, calling us so early? Akira mumbles. Oh, just a proposition for you. Naruto replies easily. Noon, training ground 3. Naruto strolled into the grounds to find a very irritated Kurinai, Asuma, and a crying guy while the genin worked on various exercises. Naruto, you're late. 
We've been here since 7 this morning, you were scheduled to start your traps and obstacle course two hours ago. Kuran I lectured in a chiding tone. Asuma snorted. Why are you surprised? Kakashi has been trying to make him a clone of his, lateness is just a part of it. Yash. My youthful neighbor. Let us reignite your flames of youth. Hikaru washed in the flames of youth this morning. You do well to follow his example of youth. Guy kept rambling until Kuranai whacked him. Kuranai turned towards Naruto, but he held up his hands. Listen, I'm sorry for being late, senpai told me noon, swear. Kuranai relaxed and Asuma sweat dropped. Damn Kakashi, let's see how he likes to hang him leading a crusade against Icha Icha he muttered. After a moment he looked back. Oh, sorry. Anyways, gather your students up and I'll start the exercise. Wait, but don't you need to prepare? Asuma asked. Naruto shook his head. No, let's just say a few friends of mine setting up the forest. Err. Okay then. Hey everyone. Come over here Asuma called and the genin gathered around. Confused looks from everyone but Team 7 came when they gazed at Naruto standing among their senses. This is your next instructor, Naruto. He's filling in for Kakashi today. Naruto eyed his former classmates wearily. He dressed in his off-duty gear, without the flak jacket or headband both were stored in a scroll on his hip pouch though. Overall he didn't give the impression of ninja. Good, he smirked inwardly. He wanted to see their faces, when his former tormentors and classmates realized he wasn't dead last anymore even, if they didn't find out he was a ninja now, much less a chunin and anbu. Boy, what's the failure doing here? Akamaru could beat this brat. Right boy. Akamaru yipped at his master's boasting, but Naruto kept a blank face. The others started questioning him. Um, and Naruto, why are you teaching us tea traps? Hinata asked with a blush. Naruto eyed her. Because I am proficient at them, and they have helped me in the past. You twelve will be completing a mission so to speak. My partner, a young hellcat named Angel, is napping somewhere in the training grounds. Your objective is to find her and bring her back. Safely. There will be opposition from some of my summons as well, but you are to disarm or avoid setting off any traps on your way to and from. Hinata blushed when he looked at her and she turned away. Whatever, loser, me and Akamaru will beat this course all by ourselves. Kiba boasted. Naruto chuckled. Too bad, your captain is Sakura, any insubordination will be punished severely. Four heads the leader. No way, Sasuke-kun is the strongest, he should lead Ino insisted, but looked over at Team 7. Sakura looked like this was normal it was, as Kakashi-sensei and Hikaru-sensei had made her lead due to her brains and support role while Sasuke gave a grudging shrug. He had to admit, letting Sakura come up with the plans enabled him to get more experience fighting. It's troublesome, but I agree with Ino that Sakura isn't the best choice. And you failed the academy, so you are not our superior. Sakura looked ready to correct him, but silenced her with a look, one Shikamaru caught. Sai, too bad. I'm your teacher today and I assign Sakura as the captain. Follow her orders like you would on an Anbu or Jonin squad. Shikamaru narrowed his eyes slightly at the analogy but assented. Now, you have 30 minutes to plan before my summons will start attacking. Though knowing Akira she'll begin in about 10. Time runs out at sunset. With that Naruto pulled out a kunai launching tag Jiraiya had taught him. He wanted to expand the effective range from 10 meters to at least 15, just fitting the expanded matrix on the same size paper was proving difficult. Plopping on the ground he shoot his former classmates away. Yash. My eternal rival, we shall complete this task, or I will run around Kanoha 50 times in my hands. If I can't do that then I'll climb the Hukage mountain with my teeth. Lee would have continued if Naruto didn't look up deep in thought about his seal problem. Sorry Lee, what did I miss? Lee and Guy's face faltered, while the other Jonin sweat dropped at Naruto's obviously accidental echoing of Kakashi. Ever since Guy began training him, Naruto and Lee had become sort of rivals, though it was more Lee trying to rope him into a contest and Naruto refusing each time. Curse your hip and cool, Naruto. Lee cried. Niji, who had worked to keep quiet as wasting his breath on losers beneath him, grabbed his teammate and dragged him towards the group of Jenin. Niji would make Haruno relieve command to him, the genius, and then they would beat the failure of Naruto's course. With the Byakugan it would be easy, even if the boy did have summons. Naruto watched him go and turned back to his work with a smile. Say, Naruto. He looked up at Kurinai. Yes. They're going to win with two Byakugan, an Inuzuka, and an Aburam, are you sure you don't want to do something else? And putting Sakura of all people, Naruto glared sharply. I'm sorry, senpai, but you forget. I have a Hayuga on my team. But my youthful student is a prodigy guy pointed out, only to grow confused at Naruto's snort. He may be good for a genin, but Hikaru is a decade ahead of him in both ninjutsu and the Byakugan, despite being only two and a half years older. Hikaru is a real genius, even if he doesn't flaunt it. In my 
position, I learned enough traps and how to use them in ways that make the fancy keke genkai your students rely on useless, as you will see. As for leadership, I pick Sakura because she's intelligent, stronger than most of the other genin now, and has experience in my tests. What about Shikamaru? I know you keep tabs on your old classmates, you know he has a high ick and is a master at shogi. HMPH, he gives up, and I'd bet he'd even quit in the finals for the Chunin exams if he believed it too troublesome. Also, he's weak, well with Sakura, even Hikaru is becoming nervous with her use of Senbon and tactics. Though, I still don't expect them to win. Not when Akira is so motivated he mused. Asuma took a puff. And what did you promise that insane feline? He asked, remembering the challenge between Kakashi and the blonde. Said blonde rubbed his head sheepishly. Oh, nothing. Just that, if she kept the genin from even reaching Angel I'd teach her how to activate exploding seals. She's very eager now. Just then Kiba's scream and later yell of damn cat. Who would pick the devil's summon? Narita Yich. Stupid tiger made the gathered wince. Wow, only 27 minutes early. I didn't expect her patience to last that long. With Kakashi. Our favorite copy ninja crouched low in a deserted alleyway, still even after 6 hours of waiting. Dragon and Tenzo were next to him. Stay still Dragon signed in annoyance when Tenzo shifted just a bit. Keep waiting, it shouldn't be long now, Iwa is supposed to be sending their Jinchuriki this way. Remember the plan. Bakashi gripped his knees, really hating this plan. Kanoha, in all her wisdom, decided that since Iwa had been confirmed to be sending a small aid to Kanoha in hopes of destroying them, that one of the Jinchuriki they'd be sending, Han, should be taken out of the picture. Intel from a certain Anbu inside Iwa who worked at Han's favorite dango shop confirmed the Jinchuriki was headed towards the western border for a simple assassination mission. Too bad he wouldn't make it. After all, the commander, a Sharingan user, and a wood-style user against a Jinchuriki was hardly a fair fight. And if his death was quietly blamed on Kumo so that they'd have to focus on Kanoha's rival. All the better. The Kashi just hoped his little brother student was handling his genin okay. Naruto chuckled at Kiba's cries and Akamaru's yelps. Kur and I gave him a look. I don't appreciate you laughing at my student, Naruto. They didn't get the full amount of time and is setting your breasts against them really fair. Hey, first they're cat summons and second we're ninjas. Since when is fair a part of our lifestyle? I haven't had more than two days off since I became a shinobi. Every day I'm supposed to be off for medical or mission leave, Dragon Sama, Gai Sensei, or Senpai has something for me to do, be it training or a favor. Yesterday I got home and was told by Kakashi Senpai I needed to take over today. So please, just can it, Kurunai Sensei, I'm really just too tired to give a damn. And in the half Naruto deftly stored his seals and stalked off to observe his former classmates be taken out by an undersized panther, a silent tiger, and lots of traps. Perhaps my youthful neighbor has dried up his youth from overwork guy said in an unusually serious voice once Naruto's live form disappeared into the canopy, his chakra signature becoming almost non-existent to anyone below a jonin. Asuma sighed while Kurunai winced. I didn't know he was that busy. Then again, he's hardly in the village proper anymore. The civilians and lower Chunin had begun to wonder if he was even around anymore and none of them knew he graduated. Yeah, Pops and the higher-ups are treating everything about the kid as some kind of top secret. Not even my youthful protege knows he is a ninja. On the days Lee is with us Naruto is on his hip and cool off duty clothes. Oh, curse you Kakashi for taking away his most youthful orange. Um, I heard that was the Anbu actually Asuma pointed out, to which guy ignored. But the test takers. The genin weren't even 20 feet in and already 10 out of the 12 had experienced various traps or were caught under one of the cats. The exceptions were Sai who had narrowly missed an elaborate kunai and wire course and Shino whose bugs were acting as his defense. Arg, who made Naruto pissed off. Sakura moaned as she was caught in the third paint bomb. Naruto was never this vindictive, unless someone hurt him first. Sasuke snorted and used his Sharingan to deflect some shuriken. Niji cried in frustration. My eyes can see destiny. Why can't they pick up where these childish pranks are hiding? Hinata was quietly wondering why hers weren't helping either, and Shikamaru dropped into his thinking pose. A hay heavy mist rolled through the forest laden with chakra, and a disembodied voice rang out. You all wonder why the dead last is able to outsmart you. News flash, I have always been able to outprank Anbu and the village heck, I could outrun most of them before I was 11. Niji, I am friends with Hikaru, and his eyes are stronger than yours. Nonsense. Niji claimed. He was the strongest since his father's. That disgrace focuses on inferior techniques to the Byakugan, his eyes have already been surpassed by even Hanabi. TSK, TSK, no. Yours and Hanabi's eyes have the potential to surpass Hikaru's, but you are just a new genin, and Hikaru is a jonin at 15. 
that, and he doesn't rely on his eyes to fight, they are just a tool like every other kunai or exploding tag. Naruto was slinking through the trees in a taunting manner as he ripped into his friend's little cousin's pride. The Kara rarely discussed his clan, but he had a special place in his heart for Niji well, more of a desire to beat the fate out of him as the boy bought into the clan's whispers that his eyes were already at the pinnacle and that Hikaru was a failure for having an even skill set. Naruto set this part of the test just for him, and Akira joined him in sniggering at the genin's misfortune from her perch nearby. Now start working together, I'll be watching. The mist pulled away slowly, and Sakura cleared her throat. Alright everyone. We have about five hours left to make it through the forest of traps, grab Angel, and bring her back to the clearing, all while staying away from Akira and Hizoka. Naruto taught Sasuke basic traps and Sai the more advanced ones, so they'll each be in charge of a subgroup. Shikamaru, who should be on what team, and what should our formations be? Sakura asked, and the group stared in shock as someone willingly split up the leadership. As Shikamaru prepared to speak, Niji spoke up. It is unwise for a civilian ninja like you to take charge, as you also have no real skills or experience, especially as my failure of a cousin taught you. I'll decide the teams and Sasuke, who had stood next to him, backed off and Sakura's first shot Niji back. She cracked her knuckles. Don't insult Hikaru sensei, and Naruto put me in charge. So shut up. The genin were wide-eyed and many could have sworn a camera click went off from above. Sakura turned a sweet smile back to Shikamaru. Continue please. Troublesome woman. Fine, here's how we'll do this. As the genin planned and set off Naruto, was enjoying the pictures he captured, Hikaru would garner no small amount of amusement from the snapshot of Niji being blown away by the pinket's fist. Good job, Sakura he complimented quietly as she delegated each task perfectly, much like a true leader. Fifteen minutes later after Akira had once again swept in for a visit to the genin, the feline appeared next to Naruto's new perch as he worked on the seal. Naruto, can I hang out with Angel? This is boring she asked. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Boring? You love this kind of thing. I saw how you turned Kiba's jacked into ribbons, and Claude I love felines into his front. The panther puffed out her cheeks. Yeah, but they're too easy. Hizoka is keeping them busy anyways, so please. She turned the kitten's eyes on him, and the blonde couldn't resist. Not fine, but don't do anything stupid. And don't let the genin capture Angel, it'd be a blow to our pride. Akira grinned and left, Naruto deciding to do the same and headed off back to the clearing to at least keep some semblance of a working relationship with the Jonin sensei Thirty minutes before sunset, with Angel and Akira. Just remember to always fill the mouth with chakra too, and you'll be fine Angel advised from her perch that Naruto left her on. The Hellcat had spent the afternoon napping and working on the false surroundings of Jinjutsu when Akira appeared asking for a favor. The panther grinned wickedly before darting off through the shadows, and Angel idly wondered if Naruto would forgive her for this. A, he'll probably find it hilarious. She decided and sat back down for another nap. Sakura and Ino were in the leading group, along with Shino and Niji, who could see the traps once the various layers of chakra unblocking seals were disabled by Sakura and Ino every few feet. They were almost at the spot where Naruto's cat would be, and Sakura was ready to be done and go home, if only so she wouldn't have to listen to the constant fighting. By now they had barely 15 minutes of that before sunset. Akira dropped in front of the group, causing them to go into the defensive. The genin had managed to injure Hizoka with a grazing, making him poof, but the panther hadn't shown herself. Hahaha. Taste this, Akira's voice cackled, and a stream of fire exploded from her mouth, hitting Ino's hair. Beep. The blonde girl screamed as the ends of her hair went up in flames. Sakura, not wasting time, cut the burning tendrils off before it reached the scalp and pulled her friend away. Shikamaru's group capture her before she burns down the whole forest. Sakura orders Shikamaru, Sasuke, and Hinata to move in, surrounding the feline. Shino sends a wave of bugs as well. Akira lets loose another round of flames, burning the bugs and singing Hinata's jacket. All around the group the forest burned. Sasuke fired off a fireball to counter Akira's and Sakura resisted the urge to rub her temples as she and Shikamaru attempted to come up with a plan. None of them knew much, if any, elemental ninjutsu and no water ninjutsu at all. Hiba and Akamaru did a jutsuga into a tree, releasing a torrent of wire, entrapping them and Sai, who was near. Ino was still fussing over her locks, and Choji used a human boulder into Shikamaru. Water style, water wall was heard, and Naruto commanded a torrent of water from a scroll, soaking everything and everyone and effectively putting out the fire. He glared down at the group, though mainly Akira. This test is over. Meet me in the clearing. He used a shunshin and was gone, much to the genin chagrin. Naruto had all twelve in front of him, sitting soaked on the ground and looking sheepish and enraged. He snorted as Kiba gave Akira on his shoulder death glares and bopped the feline as she hissed back. The jonin were hidden nearby to listen in. 
I am very disappointed he began. Protests began, but an icy glare they had never seen before silenced them. Again, disappointed. Academy students would do better than you guys. Yes, Akira should have had the foresight to not use fire ninjutsu in a forest, but so should you, Sasuke. Not only did you 12 fail, but your pace was slow, something that will get you killed in the field. Oh, yeah, loser. You didn't even graduate, what do you know? Naruto's eyes twitched. Oh screw it. Sakura, Sasuke, Sai. All three stood at attention as Hikaru and Kakashi to an extent taught them. Tell me, what rank am I? Junin, Senpai the three answered immediately, and Naruto had them sit down. Naruto nodded and took out his vest and headband. But, yes. I am a Chunin, it was a field promotion. Now, on to other matters. How did you get promoted? Village secret Naruto cut Ino off immediately. You have to learn when to use jutsu and how to move silently. I watched you all for hours in between bugging your sensei, and you all talk too much, move too loudly, and misuse jutsu throughout the entire test. The cramped space is not the place to try a human boulder or jutsuga. Your sensei will have their own reports now. Oh, and if any of you talk about my status you'll be charged with insubordination and receive a black mark Naruto added as he left, pointedly looking at Ino. She gulped but nodded and the off-duty Anbu left the genin to speculate amongst themselves. Well I didn't expect him to tell them his status as Suma whispered from his perch. Guy looked thoughtful, Will Kur and I looked a bit miffed. Still, Naruto didn't have to be so rough on them, they aren't trained to the degree he was. And that's not my fault Naruto's amused voice added as he walked up with Angel, Akira having left for home already. It's better for them to learn here in the village than die in the field. That's what I was taught. Besides, they did okay, just their ego needs work. Though I'm surprised you have Anbu helping your team Kurinai sensei See you three at the poker game tomorrow Naruto waved as he walked off, no doubt to get some rest, leaving a now thoughtful group of Jonin in his wake. Hey Naruto. Yes Angel. Naruto answered while buying some takeout ramen for Yakumo and him. He didn't have a mission tomorrow, just training at 10 with the Hokage, so Naruto planned to visit his new friend. Why were you so mean sounding back there? Akira even said you told them to be harsher, and those traps were higher than they'd see in the Chunin exams. That's I. It's just. I was bullied by most of the Genin back in the academy, and the rest ignored me. It was a form of payback. As for the Jonin. Well, I don't think they'll underestimate me now, he smirked. Angel purred. Yeah, I don't think so either. Are you mad though? About me showing Akira fire jutsu? He snorted. Hell no, that was hilarious, especially when it hit Ino's hair. Ha. Though I will need to talk to her about restraint. My water ninjutsu is coming along, Naruto added and began telling his partner about his success with the two jutsu that were beginning to not drain him completely. Ikumo stared down at her bowl curiously as Naruto and Angel consumed theirs with gusto. She tried to take a peek while Naruto ate, but the Anbu was sly, and she never managed. Huh? Not hungry? Naruto asked with a hint of worry as Yakumo was already too skinny. Go on, it's good. He reassured her. Yakumo hesitated before taking a small bite, unable to hide how much she liked it as she grinned. She sensed Naruto being smug and huffed. It's alright she gave in. Thanks mouse. No problem, he responded and got another bowl as they watched the stars start to rise. Of Kakashi's group. The Kashi's earth wall was shattered by a now version 2 hand. Tenzo's vines ensnared the Jinchuriki twice now, but the amount of chakra to hold down that many tails was frightening. Kakashi prepared his Sharingan as Tenzo again prepared his Jutsu. However, Han refused to meet Kakashi's gaze for the Jinjutsu to set in. This assassination would have been easy if not for the fact Han was being accompanied by a Jonin, one dragon was currently facing. Dragon stared at his opponent, a Jonin Kanoichi who licked her lips menacingly. Earth style, earth and stone dragon. She called and the ground rose to resemble a massive dragon. Dragon repressed an eye roll at her power display. I can't mess around, Kakashi and Tenzo are having trouble Han is better than we thought. I'll have to use it. For both of them. The commander, mind made up, used three successive shunshins to first dodge the dragon and then get into her defense. The Iwajonin blocked his sword with her own and she looked into the Anbu's eyes. Big mistake. Sharingan. Iwanin gasped. In one eye, a glowing red and spinning orb met her gaze, spinning. Night, night he said, as she fell into trance. A slice later, and she was dead. Turning his head towards the exploding demonic chakra, Dragon grimaced. I hope Hiruzen forgives me. He muttered and left to save his comrades, both of whom were wearing down. The blonde Anbu made it home in time to see Hikaru walk from the bathroom to the bedroom in his hands, singing about the new Anbu and Gamma Squad. Angel blinked, Naruto Fasipam, and both just quietly collapsed on the couch, vowing to never speak of the incident again. Naruto. Naruto shot up half an hour later when Kurama's voice rang in his head. 
It had been a while since the fox had called him anything resembling a non-insult. Yes, Karama. Odd, it's nothing. Just go to sleep. Karama grumbled after a minute. Naruto sighed at his sort of friend's attitude. No. You've been like this since I failed to use four tails, Karama. What is with you? Go to the forest of death and enter your mindscape. We'll talk there. Confused, Naruto replaces himself with a shadow clone, letting Angel sleep on the fake stomach and silently put on his shoes. With a look back towards his bedroom door the blonde quietly leaves for a place he dreaded. But dragon hours earlier. The commander of Anbu had to be the best in the forces. He had to be on par with a cage, be able to keep a cool head in the most dire of situations and have the ability to step in if the Hokage died in battle. Dragon had all those things and still found it difficult to face his underlings, both of whom were technically older than him. We'll discuss this later. For now, Kakashi prepares the lighting ninjutsu and Tiger tries to keep him boxed in with your Makutin. No, go. Dragon ordered and activated his cursed eye. And stared impassively at his attackers clearly Kanoha but inside both he and Kakuo were nervous. So far he could pick apart the two shinobi, but this new one. Be careful, that one has the manjikyu. He's dangerous, we should retreat. Kakuo was advising frantically. Han would heed that advice, if only it wasn't impossible with this empty terrain. Perfect for his boil release as targets couldn't hide. It was also perfect for his new opponent as well it seemed. Only crossing his arms in an X stopped a shunshin to the throat. After images filled the space around him, the Jinchuriki had to dodge both the shunshin master and wooden spikes. Lightning style. Electromagnetic murder. Kakashi pushed his chakra into Han, managing to puncture the mechanism for his steam. Should Han cursed and did a spiral spin to avoid multiple wooden spikes. Contrary to popular belief, Han was very flexible and was able to get inside his opponent's openings. With two hand signs a stream of steam shoots out of his hands at the Mokuten user. Only for it to catch fire as a wood clone. Ducking, he avoids a cartwheel kick and grabs the dragon mask one's leg and crushes down hard. The man just hisses and another lighting jutsu impales the other side of his armor, this time paralyzing Han for a moment. Four tales of his version, one cloak erupt again, after disappearing when he believed the fight to be over before the fast one joined in and he was regretting it now. Still swinging his capture around Han caught Kakashi in his range. Erupting strong foot using the last of his boiling steam, Han rockets the copy ninja away towards Tenzo and only survives as his Sharingan allows him to see the attack in time to block the brunt of it aimed at his chest. Needless to say Kakashi would be hurting in the morning. Wood style, smothering binding technique Tenzo wheezed, a bit out of chakra. His reserves were never anything special and today was taxing them. Wooden vines captured Han, immobilizing and draining the demonic chakra. Han was already pushing through it, though he dropped Dragon and the man used a shunshin to land next to Tenzo. Tidori. Kakashi said as he. Susanu, Sukumo an inhuman looking chakra image of a warrior-like creature rises above Dragon. Its ribsage opens and several chakra spikes shoot forward, impaling Han and the land around the Jinchuriki, before dissipating once Dragon drops the technique and clutches the eye. Han lay dead, the demonic chakra already spreading everywhere. Ugh, it's been too long since I used that. Dragon groaned. His subordinates drop to the ground as well, Kakashi and Tenzo both sporting burns and cracked ribs, Dragon himself having a possibly fractured leg. This shunshin was useful, but it left the user open for a counter-strike. It's how he lost his first eye all those years ago. He wraps the leg up after some medical ninjutsu, deeming it able to last till they got back. Dragon Sama, how Tenzo tried but Dragon stopped him. Once we're safe at home. That chakra will be felt by reinforcements and they'll be here within several hours. For now, make your wood go away, Kakashi, add some more lighting marks, while I position the bodies and hide our trail. Rain started sputtering due to it being the wet season, a small blessing as it would aid in masking their scents. Yes sir they both said, though neither could look at him. The things he did for Kanoha. Back in Kanoha, present. And we made it, where I will suspect Kumo, just as you ordered, Hokage-sama. Dragon finished his report, him and the others sitting down, the Hokage looking older than ever. They were in the Black Ops room, the place where missions that didn't exist were handed out. Dragon had been here many times, the worst still when he was given that mission. Thank you Dragon. Well it pains me to possibly start a war between the two villages, Kanoha wouldn't have survived had they sent Han and Rashi. At least now we stand a solid chance. Of course, Hokage-sama dragon bowed his head. Kakashi and Tenzo who was unmasked had blank looks. We have around five years give or take before the Gobi manifest again, at which Iwa will scramble to reseal it. Until then only Kumo has two, putting us at an advantage as we hold the Kayubi, though I hate thinking of Naruto that way. Mouse knows his duty, and he's happy. He just has a chakra battery of sorts, one that will help both him and Kanoha in the long run. 
Saratobia sense and sighs. Now, I think you need a few minutes alone with your team. This room is secure, I'll be taking a stroll. You have authorization to tell them what you wish, even the whole truth. The weight of that statement hit the commander as his leader stood up and walked away. Soon they were left alone. The three powerful shinobi, one S rank and the other two A rank, sat in silence. Finally, Kakashi spoke. Why? Why did you let us think you were dead, Shisui? For the first time in years, Dragon took off his mask outside of his sealed room. The face of Shisui Ichiha, thought to everyone but his hokage, to be dead until now, that is started with one eye on his old comrades and friends. It's hard to explain. Dryas Kakashi quipped. He had been on the same squad as Shisui for a short time before the younger man became a one-man team for a special assignment for the Hokage. Kakashi and Tenzo had both tried to keep in contact with their friend, but he drifted apart, eyes becoming more worried. And then he committed suicide, though many blamed Itachi. It was another failure on Kakashi's part, even if the rational side assured him he had no way of knowing what was happening. And now Shisui sat in front of him once again, not dead, but instead a different person, as the commander, a more serious but still joking individual. It was too much. Kakashi had to know why. Hein, just, sit back and don't interrupt, okay? The two nodded slowly. Taking a deep breath Shisui spoke, taking Suratobi's advice, and getting the weight off of him. It all began when Dan Zoshimura set his eyes on the Sharingan. After Naruto's birth he did everything to sow discord among the clan for his own desires. My cousin, Itachi, was caught in the middle. The most loyal shinobi I know, Itachi tried his hardest to stop it, but Danzo and another party didn't want the Ichiha stopped, they wanted them dead. On and on Shisui, spun the tale of the Ichiha's tragic demise, too enraptured shinobi his audience. But Naruto. Naruto sat in a treehouse his captain had made for the squad during their training last month. Getting into the lotus position he dove deep into his mind. Waking up in the sower like a seal was never a fun moment. Naruto blinked quickly, but struck off towards Kurama. Kurama held his breath as his container approached. He wasn't sure if he should be hopeful or spiteful. Hope that this weird child that was a certain type of genius with a silly side was the one? Or be spiteful in the knowledge that he was like every other human since father? Kurama didn't know. Naruto ambled in and smiled slightly at Kurama, not realizing before then how much he had grown to begrudgingly care for the fox in his head. Hey Kurama. What's the deal dragging me out here? You're here to meet me. A voice very much like Naruto's own yet dripping with malice spoke. From the shadows a clone of Naruto, though with black holes for eyes, walks out, a cruel smirk under his mask. You're not a shadow clone Naruto deduced. Yet you look like me minus the eyes. Who are you? Why I'm you. Or, the real you, that is the clone mocked, walking around Naruto like a predator. Kurama watched silently from the shadows of his cage. The creature in front represented the deep darkness in his container's heart, the rage that Kurama could gather up. If Naruto couldn't beat it, he'd be taken over, and Kurama would be released. The fox didn't know if he wanted that. Before meeting and talking with Naruto, he'd have done anything to escape, but now. Now, he wasn't sure that having a human that was approaching friendship status dying was what he wanted. Not even for freedom. As he observed, Kurama just sighed and realized either way things were changing. I'm the darkness, the rage you want to unleash. I'm what the villagers created. I'm the killer in you. Give in, will become powerful with me in charge. Dark Naruto, as the original began thinking of him as, said while pointing to himself. No. I won't let you take over, things are different now. I have friends, comrades. The two clashed, Dark Naruto aiming for vital points, Naruto doing the same. Punch for punch they match, blocking everything the other throws, any cuts disappearing as it was in the mindscape. The village is better now, my squad, my family, is enough. The shinobi sector accepts me. They break apart and glare, both realizing a battle of strength would do nothing. So, words were the ammo now. Yet you can't walk around the village except in your anbu gear without jeers and fearful looks. Dark Naruto countered. Naruto shook his head. They'll change, and I don't need them. The anbu and jonin. See us as a weapon. We remind everyone of their father or their pain. Not even our godfather wanted us. You still refuse to see the truth. Remember this. The scene in the water played out. It was of Naruto, barely an age to read, yet kicked out of the orphanage. An Anbu Kakashi he realized watched him passively from the tree nearby, simply signaling for the Hokage to be called, never comforting Naruto as he sat on a swing in the dying light. The Hokage had sighed when he arrived soon after and had let Naruto sleep in his office that night. The council had decided to put him in an apartment after that and Naruto had always been alone. That was years ago. It's in the past his protests died when another scene appeared. 
This time a 10-year-old Naruto had cried to his Jiji that his papers were being graded wrong, but the Hokage just brushed him off with a don't accuse Archunin of such things without real proof. Keep working hard, Naruto, and I'm sure you'll pass soon. Naruto had gone on a pranking spree after that, no one bothered to notice how cunning they were or how far he'd grown. Multiple other memories appeared, each painful in their own way. Being glared at when he failed, the jeers barely whispered. Walking into his apartment was vandalized again on his birthday while he was at school. No violent acts, but still to have his books torn and food kicked around a bit was disheartening. He'd never press charges, even the times they caught the ones responsible, as he wanted them to accept him and be hokage. Now do you see? They need to pay. With Karama's help we could rampage, make them fear us, and make them respect us. No Naruto said, after looking at another memory, this time of one of his lonely camping trips into the forest while eating fish. He met his dark half's gaze. I will protect the village. Why? Because. It's the right thing to do. Not everyone hates me. A lot of others are grown to like me, actually. I have comrades, a best friend, even if he is an idiot and calls me a stupid nickname. Our dreams died because of the village. Dark Naruto pointed out. Naruto snorted. No, they changed. Why be Hokage stuck with paperwork when you can be a shinobi who protects their village on the field instead? I can be a Jounin sensei one day, an Anbu captain. Heck, if Dragon Sama ever retires he's ageless, I swear then I could be the commander. Naruto rambled on and Dark Naruto growled. So you leave me behind. Here to rot while you make us the village's attack dog. What's the point? I'm useless. Naruto smiled a bit. No, you're not. Both Kurama and Dark Naruto shot him. You're the one that kept me alive, that made killing for the village doable. You made me. No us, balanced. For there can't be light without darkness, or good without bad. No one is all good, not even the sage. We just need to get along. Naruto said, remembering the lesson on yin and yang that the Hokage taught him. The past is the past, it's a part of who we are. But let's not let the past shadow the future, okay? He held out a hand, pulling down his mask and smiling a genuine smile. Dark Naruto gazes at the hand like it could be a trick, but hesitantly takes it. After a minute he two copies and pulls down his mask for a smile. Two whiskered blondes stare at one another, even as Dark Naruto's eyes become blue and he fades. Thank you were his last words, before Naruto had a feeling of completeness, a feeling he didn't realize he'd missed before now. Hirama's mouth was slightly agape. His container merged with his darkness, beating it not by force but by acceptance. Strangely, Kurama couldn't help but be impressed with the display. Hey Kurama. His human. A friend, Kurama decided, said. Yes, Naruto could be a friend, even if his methods were delusional. Like the show, I hope, my friend. Humph. As if you could be my friend. Get out of here, Gaki, your presence annoys me. Kurama snorted, insulting Naruto, hiding the hopeful glint by the shadows. Ah. One day you'll see the truth, you like me. Just you wait. Whatever. Naruto. Neither understood that that night under the crescent moon in the vicious forest, the buddings of the most powerful partnership was born. Even if it was in its infancy and dominated by insults. Some relationships were just like that. Unknown to Naruto, his captain and big brother senpai were on their own emotional rollercoaster. With Dragon. Dragon no Shisui, they reminded themselves, looked hopeful after telling the first two people after the Hokage everything. So you were supposed to make Fugaku stop the coup with your Sharingan. Yes. And then Danzo stole one eye, so you went to the Hokage, and instead of killing the bastard right there he had you fake your death by putting Itachi in a Jinjutsu and giving him your other eye which was really your mother's who had died years ago. The coup happens, and now Itachi is a double agent for the village in an organization that wants to rip the Kayubi out of Sensei's son. Yes. At the time we didn't know about the second man pulling the strings or that Danzo helped organize the coup by manipulation. His plan was to use my eye to get Naruto under his control as Hiruzen would think it's his own choice. He succeeded too, but I reversed it, making Danzo freak out thinking the eye only worked as a pair. He went underground, keeping root close. Hiruzen refused to believe his friend went that low, so I had to gather sufficient evidence in his words before I could kill him and take my eye back. Technically I could kill him now, but Root has to be eradicated with its shinobi either joining or dying. Root was supposed to be controlled by the Hokage, but Danzo has kept most of them as his private army, doing dirty work that has actually harmed the village, not helped it. The plan now is to take him and his lackeys out right after the exams, letting the chaos of Orochimaru and Suna's plans be a mask for what amounts to mass murder. If some escape the initial cleansing we can tell the public they're Suna spies instead of kidnapped and brainwashed members of clans. Out of the 300 Root agents, estimates from our mole inside is that only a hundred the children will be salvageable. An inside agent. Tenzo asked with a raised eyebrow. 
his time en route showed that usually malls were quickly turned or eradicated. Yes, the agent used to follow Danzo blindly, but they've since started to question his methods after being on a long-term assignment in the village. They sought the Hokijin eye out a while ago, letting us put a tracking seal on him and an Aviram bug to gather intel. Because of them we're ready. Good, let's take the creep out of Kakashi states. Shisui blinked. Oh hell no. You two were told just to keep you quiet and that I wanted to let two of my old friends know the truth. You guys can just keep things running while the Hokage and I do this. Nope, sorry, Dragon-sama, Kakashi replied with an eye smile and sickly sweet tone, but according to you, he tried to take Naruto and make him his own personal pet, and he already attempted the same thing on Tenzo here. We can be of help. Senpai is correct, let us help, we are comrades and friends. Tenzo added. Shisui smiled at them. Alright already, he held his hands up in surrender. You win, I'll write you up in my strategy. Now here he puts on his mask again and slightly shifts into dragon once more, even if they were basically the same. Let's go get some medical attention, before I go break Mouse's defenses again he rubbed his hands together gleefully. Kakashi and Tenzo sweat dropped. Um, Dragon-sama. Why do you keep breaking down Naruto's seals and replacing his food every night? Tenzo asked. Dragon tapped where his chin would be. Um, well it's a good mental workout for me, disabling his traps and seals that, and it makes Mouse keep improving security, while also keeping him dedicated to Guy's training. That, and it's fun he added as they walked her in Dragon's case, tried to not limp over to the medical section where Mednin would be waiting. An hour later the three made it to the apartments, Kakashi and Tenzo deciding to help in the mischief. They see Naruto casually walk into his door. Tenzo frowned. He's not supposed to be up this late. Oh, someone is having corner duty during our next Hokage shift Tenzo muttered. Kakashi snorts. Tenzo, calm down, you're his captain, not mother. Naruto is a ninja, and if he wants to stay out until 3am in the morning that's his problem. Tenzo gaped at him while Dragon chuckled. I have to agree he shouldn't be punished, as tomorrow is just a training day not a mission. Also, I find the best punishment would be letting Guy help aid his flames of youth earlier than normal, nah. Two devilish smirks met his hidden one. Dragon knocked on Guy's door, and the green beast answered with a blinding grin. Greetings, Guy. Mouse was so heartbroken that you left him behind yesterday and I think taking him early would cheer him up. Him and his temporary roommate just love early morning workouts. Dragon said cheerfully. I rambled on about youth before zipping by with the training gear, already in Naruto's apartment, Kakashi and Tenzo having already gotten it untrapped for him. New were the dual cries as Naruto and Hikaru were manhandled for their special training. How did you know Naruto missed training yesterday? Tenzo asked idly once they left. Dragon turned towards him. I'm the commander. I know everything, and when I'm not here, my crow is he added silently. Right, sure. When Naruto later limped into his ninjutsu lessons with Jiraiya, who had returned and planned on showing his gods in the five-pronged seal and another earth-style move, he was twitching, with bags under his eyes. Youth. Youth. Damn youth. I will get my revenge. The boy cackled madly, making Jiraiya wonder if the fox was taking over. And the seal Kurama had his ears covered, not wanting to hear that cursed word again. Meanwhile, a disheveled Hikaru arrived for Team 7's training, in a similar state as his younger friend. Iwa, later. Anoki raged against his desk. Kumo their supposed allies had killed one of their Jinchuriki, meaning they would be down to only one for four to six years before it reformed. Bastards Anoki muttered. The evidence pointed to Kumo and that some of them got away, but it would be stupid to go to war now, before they could prepare. Anoki turned towards his trembling assistant. Send word to Rachimaru. We won't be helping in his invasion for personal matters. Hold Rashi back, he's to be confined to the village. I won't have another of our Jinchuriki dead. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. If you want the next part of this video. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.